Hey folks, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I'm Ave Angel, and this is a lot different. This is the Blériot 11, one of the very first heavier than air aircraft to fly in the world. Not the first, obviously, but one of the first true monoplanes that we ever had. This one, of course, a French aircraft first flown and made famous by Louis Blériot and his aircraft company that produced it, although it was designed, of course, by Raymond Saulnier. It is a iconic piece of aviation history created by Wing 42 Simulations, a company that brought us, of course, the Vega. Now, this one, of course, is the one that Blériot flew across the English Channel on the 25th of July, 1909, and one of the most famous accomplishments of the pioneer aviation era. Now, it seemed to him a lasting place in history, but many other pilots too. Now, it brought huge notoriety, of course, for newspapers at the time, defining that England was no longer isolated, it was no longer an island, according to the Daily Express at the time, uh, who were once reputable. And it was produced in both single and two-seat versions and powered by several different engines, including the Gnome Omega, which was a 50-horsepower rotary, and the three-cylinder Anazi, or Anzani, three-cylinder at 25 horsepower. My pronunciation not perfect there. Now, it was, of course, used in the First World War at the start as a both artillery spotter and reconnaissance aircraft, usually in the two-seat configuration. And it's also notably the first plane that was flown by Harriet Quimby, the first licensed female pilot in the US and the first female to fly the English Channel solo. So, let's take a look at the aircraft, shall we? So, once we get in the cockpit, we see there's a lot of air in the way here. Plenty of room for us to see anything going on. Now, you'll notice the propeller just moved there because, yes, I can actually grab that one. That's how you can start the actual aircraft. We are incredibly simple in this design, but the texture quality is stunning. Oh, God, my camera's being a little bit weird. Now, yes, we are at an airport with, uh, we're at Lid in England, because I wanted to be close to the channel. But the aircraft itself is incredibly basic, but incredibly beautiful. The detailing is phenomenal. And as I've stated previously in videos, this is not an in-depth review. This is a first look. This is my impressions. And I love how the little bird dog over there has its wheels sunk in. Thank you, AI. But... Whilst this isn't a plane I would likely fly on long cruises or GA trips, it's something I would love to be able to fly in my hangar. Now, we are flying the easiest of the three versions. It includes three. The Noma Mega being the easiest. It has more horsepower. Uh, there's the Anzani, which is more difficult. Then there is the fully realistic one, which is completely set to how the real thing would behave and apparently very difficult. So we're not going to try that one because I don't particularly want to die in a video. So... We're going to work on starting the aircraft, which is, based on what I've read, a little bit more complicated than one would imagine. Don't know how many of my controls actually will do anything here. The throttle is basically on and off to an extent. Magneto interruption is how it actually works. Will it start? It will not start. Okay. <laughs> the instructions were quite complex and there are not a ton of controls. So we're going to do our best to operate this as would be expected by the aircraft. So let's open our fuel valves. Let's make sure everything else is set and ready. I think we are good. And let's pull firmly. Let's see what our other view is here. I believe there is another viewpoint that lets us... There we go. Doesn't want to start, does it? Did it start? I think it's running. Okay, there may be a sounds issue there. Because I don't notice any sort of sound going on do we move we don't move the fuel valves are closed interesting we'll, we'll come to this one of course ah there we go manual operated fuel pump we found it in the end I was reading through the PSD that comes with the aircraft it comes with full documentation including historic manuals there we go 
Oh, let's pull the throttle back. That is a very rattly engine. As I'm trying to brake, and it doesn't appear to want to brake, we have no actual brakes, so that is a thing. We needed our shocks. Oh, God. Okay, she is not as nimble as one might expect a GA aircraft to be. <laughs> okay, this is, this is scary. Please stop. Please stop spinning. Please stop spinning. Thank you. Ground handling is created for this aircraft. And that's water. I'm just going to take off this way. This seems like the right idea. So we should take off at about 20 knots. What that is, I don't know, but the tail is up now. And we're airborne. There we go. That's what we needed. This is definitely a handful. They warn in the manual this plane is very unusual. Now, I didn't automatically go for my brakes when I took off, which is cute because it has no actual brakes on the wheels. Now, it does say to use the parking brake as chocks so you can click on the wheel as well before flight to actually set that, which you should do. And you should be pointing into the wind for takeoff, so... Not something that is intended to taxi and fly you around. I don't want to stall the plane here. We have very low speed operations. And we have an altimeter which is calibrated 100 meters, but not calibratable by air pressure. So a lot of this is flying off sentiment and feeling than anything else. Again, this is just first impressions. This is me seeing how it behaves. And this is a terrifying experience. Look at how much everything I can see. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is a handful. Of course, flying on the uh, Honeycomb Alpha yoke, which is probably more than the flight sticker would have had in this. You can see down there. Two-handed wheel of sorts. Very noisy engine. Oh, we had a freeze. That's just flight sim itself. Let's turn a little north. Or up the coast, at least. I have no idea what direction we're going. This would actually most likely be east, based on this being the south coast of the UK. No trim response whatsoever, so the aircraft does not simulate trim, which would be accurate. Very noisy with this little three banger or five banger rotary engine on this particular model with the Gnome Omega. Great for spotting though, you can see everything. As we fly along here. Look at this thing. Oh my god. <laughs> what a flight experience we are having right now. So there's Lid, and we're gonna try and go back and land and see how this works out for us. I suspect poorly, but we could always find out. <laughs> this is, I gotta say, again, I, Pam Brooker did the flight model for this. Pam Brooker has a history of doing some phenomenal work when it comes to flight modeling in simulators like FFSX. Uh, she's a wonderful person. I've had a chance to talk to her a few times, but I don't know how this thing should fly. I fly GA planes. I understand the principles of aviation. I know how to successfully fly around, but this is a visceral, noisy, terrifying experience that I have never, ever once experienced in my life. It feels like I am flying something that will fall apart in 10 seconds flat, but it's enjoyable. It is surprisingly enjoyable. Imagine trying to cross the channel in this or fly the Alps or the Pyrenees as a uh, the aircraft historically accomplished. This would be a horrifying experience. True seat to the pants navigation by looking out at the aircraft, which is easier than I think most realize. Alright, we're going to attempt to come back into the lid here and land. I'm 
gentle control inputs because it is incredibly sensitive and very susceptible to gusts of wind. I don't appear to be losing speed or the engine turn changing. I believe I have to interrupt the throttle. That's it. We keep it windmilling, it'll keep it starting. There we go, yep. That's working as intended. But I need something to kill the speed. Will it side slip? <laughs> There's the challenge. Easy over on the... Oh, no, 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 no. It doesn't want to. It does not want to at all. It just wants to spin. So we'll keep bringing it down here. Because throttling back actually should make a difference. Oh, no. We cut the fuel. Keep that low. Doesn't want to lose speed. Nor does it like runways. When I say I reviewed the manual, I glanced over it to try and understand the basics with this being a complicated aircraft. You know what? We'll dead stick this in. Maybe this is what a lot of pilots did. I don't know. But uh, it's the only way I can foresee losing any speed without killing myself here. As we dive slowly and majestically down towards the runway. I should make it before the end of this thing. We'll give it a little flare once we get a little bit closer. Again, probably most terribly inaccurate, but I don't care. This is a blast. I'm having such fun flying this thing. I will have to go and actually review the manual in depth afterwards and study this thing because I really want to fly this thing better. This is really enjoyable. So we'll just give it a little bit of a flare. Oh, hello. And we touch down. So in terms of a plane built in 1909, I guess being able to take off, fly around and land again is a huge success. So I will call that a successful flight. <laughs> um, this thing is... Honestly, exciting, terrifying, horrifying, enthralling, and majestic all in one. As uh, the only way to stop it is the parking brake. So we're just going to let it roll to a stop here. It shouldn't actually have any tailwheel handling, but we'll give it a kick of the rudder just to get ourselves off the runway. And we'll apply that parking brake. Which should be the chocks. I wonder if I can click that. No, I should be able to do that from the interior view, the prop view they talked about. No, that's start the engine view only, so we can't do that. But look at this, it's beautiful. The detailing is phenomenal, even inside here in the engine cowling, where I'm pretty sure I shouldn't be. A phenomenal artistic job by the developers. A thing of beauty. I can't criticize this in the slightest. If you want a plane to go flying GA, $100 hamburger hops, this is not for you. If you, however, want a plane that will truly excite you, make you want to put on a sheepskin bomber jacket and uh, a white silk scarf and your flying helmet, this is definitely it. Um, I look forward to seeing some more aircraft. I look forward to bringing the Vega to uh, FS2020. I'd love to see things like uh, the World War One biplanes, monoplanes, the Tri-Decker, the Iron Decker, uh, the Camel, the Bristols. Oh my god, that would be so cool with how good this sim looks, low and slow. Imagine those planes now with the beautiful views. At some point, I may try and cross the channel in this. This feels like a challenge I have to accept, but for now, should you buy this, you can get it from the website. I will have a link in the video description. It's 25 bucks, and I just got $25 worth of excitement from that one flight. So yes, the answer is yes. Thanks for watching. Bye.